I'm going to show you how much tax you could end up paying from your IRA. How do you compare to Alan? Take a look at the clip of this webinar that I did on taxes. Enjoy. And so here we're going to have Alan, and he's probably not all unlike a lot of y'all on the uh, webinar here, mid-60s, uh, retiring this year, or maybe you're thinking of retiring soon, within a couple years, right? And like the majority of America, the majority of his savings are in an IRA or a 401k, one of those tax-deferred plans, right? The tax-deferred bucket where you got a deduction when you put it in, you're only going to pay tax uh, when you take it out. The problem is... He has those same competing needs that we talked about. He wants to protect and grow it, wants to provide for himself and his wife, but maybe leave something for the kids to fight over when he's gone, right? And then how much is he going to pay in taxes? That's what he wants to know. So as we're all saving for retirement, we're getting our account balances. You know, we get our monthly statements and we're seeing that uh, balance go up, hopefully, <laughs> right? I mean, here recently, we probably saw it go down. Uh, but like I said, I don't, want to, I don't want to just, you know, gloss over that. I do want to understand that that is emotional, but it, it will come back. We will get through this. Uh, we have a history, America, the, the entire world, stuff like this happening. We get through it. And so we will. It's just while we're in the throes of it, it, it tends to be very uh, ridden with anxiety, but we will get through it. There's actually a lot of good news that we are starting to see come from uh, different, you know, sources about the coronavirus and not only, possibilities of um, uh, uh, medicine, something, you know, stuff that can actually an an take care of it and can actually fight it, uh, a lot of different things. So a lot of good information coming about. So there's definitely some hope, a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, going back to this, we're, we hope we're seeing it go up all the time. Let's say we get ready to retire. We have a half a million dollars sitting in our account. The question I always ask people is, do you really have $500,000 sitting in that account? And they'll usually say, well, no, and that's right, because actually you are going to have a $375,000 balance, because if you're in the 25% tax bracket, federal and state combined there, you have $125,000 debt to the IRS. So the true account value is only about $375,000 at that time, because you have to subtract uh, tax, because you can only spend your net income. You can't spend the, the gross. If you're taxed on it, that's not spendable money. And so if we lower the amount of tax that you have to pay, then we have therefore increased the income. And if people are worried about running out of income, if we give you more spendable income, well, that means you're going to run out uh, a lot later or you're not going to run out at all, right? So that's why we do this. So he wants to know, when should I pay my taxes? You know, should I consider converting to a Roth IRA or some other type of a tax-free vehicle? What should I do? Well, this is how your taxes actually work, guys, in, from an IRA balance. You got this big IRA balance sitting in there in your account, right? And as you take it out through RMDs or through just regular distributions, you're going to be taxed on that. Now, a lot of people find themselves in a situation where they may not need their IRA withdrawals, their, their RMDs, which are required minimum distributions, they may not need those, or they may not need all of them. So where are they going to put those if they're going to reinvest them? Well, now they have to reinvest them back into one of those non-qualified buckets, the tax, the taxable buckets, right? So you're not taxed on it when you put it in, but you're taxed on the growth. And so boom, growth from the reallocated assets, you'll be taxed on that throughout your life as well, throughout your retirement. And then when we pass away, unfortunately, Uncle Sam's not done with this yet. The, when our IRA balance goes to our heirs, they're going to get taxed on it. Now, let's talk about the SECURE Act here for a second, because some of you are uh, aware of what that did. Um, and then what it did, and also some of the, I don't know if they're necessarily unintended consequences, but some of the consequences of the SECURE Act. So it used to be when, when we pass away, oops, sorry, there you go. When we pass away, whatever this balance in our IRA was, our kids did not have to take all of it out at one time and be taxed on a huge lump sum. They could stretch it out throughout their entire life and therefore only be taxed on a small amount every single year. And therefore that balance can continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. And maybe there's something to even pass on to the grandkids. And so that's why we call it a stretch IRA, a multi-generational stretch IRA. Well, with the SECURE Act, it was passed at the end of last year. One thing it did do was increase the required minimum distribution age from 70 and a half up to 72. So that was good. But it also says now that IRA can no longer be stretched out for their entire life. It has to be taken out within 10 years. Yeah. So they just squished it into 10 years. Not only that, they now say that they don't have to take it out every single year of those 10 years. They just have to have the entire balance taken out by that 10th year. 
this is the problem that we're seeing that we're going to see with that and your kids take receipt of that without proper planning what normally happens when they receive it they're probably still working a lot of them you know in people are still working later in, in life now. And so they're making a lot of money and they're not going to be worried about taking it out because they don't have to every single year, but year nine is going to come and they're going to be like, Oh, oh I got to take this out before the end of the next year. And then, so now they got to take the entire balance plus all the growth from the time you passed away to the time that, uh, you know, 10 years later, they have to take all that out. And so now they will be jacked up into a really high tax bracket. Um, and, and, you know, all the other ensuing things that happen because of that. And so a lot of our wealth, if not properly planned, is going to end up going back to Uncle Sam, rather than the people that we would actually like to have it. And so that's why planning can be done now, in order to make sure that that doesn't happen, so that you and your family can actually have the majority of what you've saved so hard for instead of it going to Uncle Sam. All right, so let's keep talking about Alan and some uh, examples here. So let's assume this is going to show the difference between one strategy versus another strategy. How much tax would you pay doing this? How much tax would you pay doing that? And obviously, you would want to pay the least amount of tax uh, if that's the case, but how much less, right? Does it really matter? I mean, if I just took my required minimum distributions, reinvested what I didn't need, I mean, really, what's going to be the difference there if I decided to do a Roth? Because here's the issue, guys. If you do decide to convert to a, you know, some type of a tax-free vehicle, in the year that you convert, that's going to be counted as income. And so the problem with that is people are artificially inflating the amount of tax they pay in the years that they do those conversions. So in their head, they're like, well, I'm, I'm paying more tax than what I would have had to pay if I didn't do this, right? But when you look at the long-term ramifications of it, no, you're actually paying a whole heck of a lot less tax. And this is going to show that. But we're going to assume that Alan here, he's 66. He's going to be in the 25% tax bracket. He's going to stay in the 25% tax bracket in retirement because most retirees are. And when he reaches 72, he's going to start taking out his required minimum distributions because that's the age now. It's not 70 and a half, 72. I'm so glad that the IRS decided to get away from the half age thing, right? I mean, it used to be 59 and a half before you could take it out or you're assessed a penalty, 70 and a half. Now you have to take it out or you're assessed a penalty. Nope, they just went 72. Nice round number, easy math for people. So we're going to figure that Alan's going to live to be about age 90, which with, you know, now, uh, once you hit age 65, all new life expectancy tables can Average lifespan for a man is 86, for a female is 88. And if you're married, flip a coin, one of you is making it to 90 and a 25% shot, one of you is making it to 95. So 90 is a pretty, uh, pretty good one. All right, so he gets his RMDs all the way to 90 and he's just gonna pay the tax on those as it goes. That's 158,000. Gonna pay tax on the reallocated assets. That's about another 70,000. And then the tax that his kids are gonna pay on the IRA value at death is gonna be about 110,000. So total, Taxes paid of about $338,000 on an IRA balance that today is $500,000. I don't know how many of us ever looked at our account balance as it's growing and realized that whatever that account balance is when I'm in my mid 60s, I'm going to end up paying about two thirds of that balance throughout my life in taxes. That is just there's an industry term for that. It is called ridiculous, R ridiculous, right? So that's one avenue to go. Just take out your required minimum distributions, not really worry about taxes. What would that do? Well, $338,000 in taxes. If we decided, you know what, what if I wanted to try to convert that? And, and, and most likely you would not convert the entire $500,000 in one year, right? That would, you know, jack you up into some really high tax what you would want to do is you would want to do that strategically over the, you know, maybe four, five, six, seven, eight years, something, something like that. You'd want to do it strategically, not all at once. So that way you stay in, in lower tax rates. And so $500,000. So if you decide to convert and you're in that 25% tax bracket, federal and state, well, you're going to pay $125,000. Can't get away from that. We call that mandatory versus optional taxes. Those are your mandatory taxes. You can't, you're going to have to pay something on those. So it's 125. However, how much tax are you going to have to pay on the Roth IRA growth? Correct answer is zero. And how much tax do your kids pay when you uh, pass away and there's still a Roth IRA balance? How much tax do they got to pay on that? Correct answer is zero. Exactly. So here, $125,000 is your total tax liability compared to the 
338,000 and change over time, right? It was actually a little higher than that, 505, I think, right? So it is basically call it the $213,000 difference. There's your decision right there. So if any of you are like on here right now and you're wondering whether or not uh, you want to think about taxes, it might be worth sitting down. I mean, if you're anywhere close to those numbers, that can make a significant impact on your overall, uh, not, not only your overall like retirement and how much you pay in taxes, but then your kids as well. So uh, let's help you get set up in a position to where you'll actually be able to take advantage of some of these lower tax rates now, rather than waiting later until they go when they go back up. That's only if Congress like keeps them where they're at. <laughs> it's like they might decide to raise them. Are you comfortable paying that much in optional tax, or would you like to start a conversation about what we could do to address that issue? Uh, you can simply schedule a conversation with us down here. Uh, the Calendly link, it's in the description for a complimentary 15-minute phone call. And if you would like to have uh, other retirement questions answered, then maybe just check out the playlist right here, you know? Um, and if you want up-to-date content, just make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you'll be updated every time that we post new content because we want to give people the confidence that their retirement strategies uh, are going to give them income to last as long as they do so that they can enjoy the retirement that they deserve. So once again, smash the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. We'll see you on the other side. Take care.